All right, welcome back to The Money Puzzle. Uh, I'm Chris Vaughn. I'm here with Eric Douglas today. Uh, we, uh, we're going to do this a little bit differently because all of our other compatriots are out of town on vacation. It is, uh, we're filming this uh, going into 4th of July weekend. Uh, so they're out enjoying themselves, and Eric and I are here holding down the fort along with Miss Producer back here. I was just going to call him lazy, but okay, I, I was trying to be nice, but yeah, lazy works. <laughs> Taking time out of the office, how <laughs> dare they go on vacation with their families? Uh, That's, that is horrible. Horrible. Uh, yeah. What uh, what we thought we'd talk about today was uh, because we're recording this on July first. As of yesterday, mm -hmm. the first half of the year is officially over, and it was, it was epically bad. Well, right. it, it was interesting. <laughs> so, all right. So, a lot of interesting I, things happening in the first half of the year this year. I, I've had in the last several months, uh, as I'm going through performance with my clients, all but a couple of them have said, I know it's bad. I don't want to look. <laughs> right. It, it, that, has been, that has been interesting because I've had the same experience yeah. with a number of clients. Great clients. Um, it, it, and it's almost to their credit where they're like, you know what? I, I get it. It's, yeah. it's, it's not a great year. I just don't really care what performance is. He's like, I, I, I trust you. <laughs> right. And, and yeah, I've, and, heard, and I've heard very similar things, but I, I think it is important that we do discuss what is actually going oh, on. Oh, we'll, we'll definitely you know? get into it. It was funny. So, I'll tell you a funny story. I had a yeah. client meeting yesterday and I get to the point where, you know, we normally would talk about performance and I said, okay, I had the tab up. Do you want me to, do you want to see the number? Yep. Do you want to see the number? And they're like, ah, no, we're okay. And I said, it's, it's better than others. It's not as bad as you probably think it right. is. But, um, but, but yeah, it was just an interesting anecdote where just to see where it's interesting to see where people's heads are at right now, yeah. um, considering this really is one of the worst markets we've had. I mean, definitely in my lifetime, um, definitely since 08 anyway. And there's, sure. some, there's some, so there's some market differences between 08 and 09 and what we're experiencing right now, which we're obviously about to yeah. get into right now. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and dive into that. So, uh, when we say this was just a horrible opening to a year and we've heard this thrown around on the news that it was coming right well now we've got final numbers in so compared to previous first halves yep. just how bad was this so the fourth worst year ever in the history of the market first half of the year the first half this right. is the worst first half of the year um, or the fourth worst first half of the year. Yeah, wow. Say that five times fast, right? <laughs> um, but in 1940, uh, we had a minus 20.9% drop to start the year. In 1970, this is the worst year since 1970, 52 years ago, by the way, um, where, you know, 1970, there was a 20.2% drop. Uh, and this is in the, uh, the S&P 500. Okay. Uh, as of yesterday, the S&P was down a little over 20%. It was 20.6%. Uh, percent down through the first half of the year. So that's worse than 1970, right? So that's worse than, it's between 1970 and 1940. Yes. Wow. The, the worst drop to start a year was in 1932. And you probably know what right. was Great happening Depression, in the sure. Great Depression. Yeah. Uh, and and the, that year started off with a negative 44.5% return um, in 1932. Wow. Now, so, so that's the bad, right? And, and, and what, what do we always talk to clients about right now? Or what do we make sure that we want to make sure that they're doing? Uh, we want to make sure that they're not panicking. Not panicking. That's, that's the first thing. Not panicking, staying the course, yep. making sure everything still fits, making sure their financial plans are still in order right. and we're still on path, right? So that's always very important. But I want to back up, okay, what happened in the rest of the year and some of these yeah. other years? Because I think this is really good for providing some context to make sure we think about, okay, yeah, well, I'm sitting here telling you how horrible the beginning of the first half of the year was. And we're only talking about the equity markets. We're going to get into the fixed income markets as well, because that's honestly why the year has been so bad. It's not because Agreed. of the equity yeah. market. But so in 1970, we had a 20.2% drop. 52 years ago, once mm -hmm. again, we haven't had a, a, this bad of a drop in the first half of the year since 1970. The market dropped 20.2%. In the first half of the year, what do you think the market returned in the second half of the year? I don't know. What do you got? 25.3%. Up. Up for the second half of the year. Right. So basically at the end of the year, because if it draws, if it comes down 20, it has to come up 25% to come right, back to even. to catch up. So basically at the end of the 1970, we had a market return of 0%. Right. Um, in, I mentioned 1932, the market dropped 44% to start the year. In the second half of the year, it returned 53%. So the year-to-date number, when he got to December 31st, mm -hmm. was you know the market was down about 14.8%. 
certainly nothing to cheer about, right. but it definitely wasn't down 44% uh, at the end of the year. Um, 1962, the market was down 26% to start the year, 20% return for the second half of the year. So in all of those cases, they didn't catch up to where they were at the beginning of the year, but they started approaching it. It was not the end of the world. You had a, you had a, you had a good second half of the year. You had a positive price return or positive market basically for the second half of the year. Because what, what do we always say? Okay, you go down, you know, you, you, what do you never want to do when you're at the bottom of a market? You never want to sell out. Right. Because then you miss the initial run up. In most of these cases, in every, in every one of the years that we've had a worse start to the year than this year, there was a positive, positive price return for the second half of the year. So it, this year sucks. It, yeah. I don't know. There's not, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know if that's a technical no term way around necessarily, that. but <laughs> the, first half, the first half of this year sucked. I was talking to a client, the same client I just mentioned. I was talking to a client yesterday about this. And I, there, there's not really any way to spin the market this year. No. It's, just been a, it's been a nasty start to the year. We were due. Um, we had record returns in 19, 20, and 21. Mm -hmm. Just an un unbelievably insane market for the last three years. Yep. Well, on average, the market's going to get you, you know, for every three positive years, you're going to get one negative one. Well, we had the three biggest, most positive years the last three years. Guess what we're having this year? Right. You know? And I, and I think that's where a lot of people, they kind of forget that. Yeah. They, we've been in a bull market for so long that they have forgotten that this is part of the natural cycle. It is, uh, the yeah. people who have been ready to you know, jump off the cliff over all this, I just don't understand what's happening to my money. Well, it, we were due for this. And, and the longer that we had to wait, the worse it's gonna feel, right? And then to your point, the last three years prior to this were epically good, right? They were fantastic years. So the higher up you go, when you do fall, it's, it's a further fall and it's more painful. Yeah. And I, I think people forget that sometimes. Yeah, and, and I think it's you know important to to remember as well. I mean, w what are we talking about most specifically right now? We're talking about the equity markets, the right. stock markets, and I'm mean, I'm using the S and P price returns because that's typically the most common um, commonly notated index right. that we use for the stock market. Either that or the Dow Jones Industrial. The Dow Jones Industrial is actually a very not. It's only thirty companies. Yeah, it's yeah. really not even yeah. that great of an index to quote, but. Um, but the S&P is a little, bit, a little bit better and a little bit more common, but um, we haven't touched on bonds. And, yeah. and the equity market sucks, don't misunderstand. The real problem this year has been with the bond market. Yeah. All right. So let me kind of tee that one up yep. for you a little bit. The reason why the bond markets uh, have been the problem this year is, you know, normally when the equity markets go down, you move into more of an income position because that's that's the safe haven if there is such a thing, yeah. right? Um, but we haven't been able to do this that this year. Uh, the bond markets have been arguably worse than the equities markets. All right, why is that? Well, to be clear, that the bond market this is the worst bond market since we started tracking the right. aggregate bond index yep. in the early seventies. It <laughs> might have been nineteen seventy something remember. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was the early seventies somewhere. I don't remember the exact year, but this is literally the worst year for bonds on record right you know the aggregate bond is down uh 12 percent through the first two quarters of the year um un unheard of right and, and, i mean and once again you you go to bonds for safety right when your equities are going to zig you want your bonds to zag right or at least to stay put stay flat right. and still produce that steady stream of income right and you think you know 12 percent down on the ag versus 20 percent down on the s p well, that's not as bad, but the bonds are supposed to be the more stable side of the portfolio, right? That's so if your so if your equities are down twenty percent, well, your bonds are not supposed to be down. Right, maybe down a few percentage yeah. points, but you're still getting that regular income. Well, when when your bonds are down 10, 15 percent, and I, I said the aggregate bonds, right? Corporate bonds are down more than that. Yep. International bonds are down more than that. High yield bonds. Um, so I, I mean. It, it, when we say fixed income, I mean, they're just like equities. When you look at the stock market, you have small caps, you have mid caps, you have mm -hmm. large caps, you have international, you right. have emerging markets, you have so many different types of sectors, you know, <laughs> uh, industrials, utilities, energies, financials, right? There's so many different sectors of the stock market and different types of companies that you can invest in. 
so it's dangerous when you hear about you know the 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 stock market as a whole because it's really hard to say the stock market as a, the Nasdaq, which is much more growth and tech heavy. Right. Well, that's down thirty percent year to date. Yeah. Twenty, I think twenty eight point nine or something like that. Um, that's down even worse than the S and P yeah. five hundred. So if you're a little bit more tech heavy or growth heavy, you're probably down far more than yeah. the twenty percent. That's right. Um, but you know, going back to the bond market, there is a ton of diversity in the bond market as well. So I'm just quoting you kind of the aggregate bond performance, but a lot of bonds are down even more than yeah, that. Yeah, they're, they're much worse than that. So, right. so you know, the, the, what's supposed to be zigging in your portfolio is not doing so. Right. Um, a number of different reasons for that, uh, but primarily it goes back to Fed policy, yep. the Federal Reserve. Um, and so what they're trying to do to fight inflation is mm -hmm. they're trying to raise rates. Um, I, we, it's the only tool that they have. It's the only yeah, tool we've that, talked the, about yeah, that it's the yeah. only tool that the Federal Reserve has is, you know, the interest rates. And the interest rates that we're talking about is basically they set the Fed Fed funds rate or the federal funds rate, which is the rate at which banks borrow money. And we've talked about this yeah, before. Sure. That banks borrow money from one another overnight. Because banks have to have so much money in reserves, and they have, you know, if they have excess money in reserves, they'll loan it to another, you know, bank because right. they need the, you know, they need to make sure that they're maintaining money. But whenever banks have money for themselves that they're borrowing from other banks, let's say if a bank is borrowing money at two percent, they're going to turn around and loan it to you and I on a mortgage or right. a car loan or something else for three percent. Right. That's and then they that's make, where they make their they money. Make their money that's on right. their spread, right? So when the Fed starts raising interest rates in response to high inflation because interest rates have been so, so low for so long. Yep. That's been great when you want to get a mortgage, not been great when you're trying to invest in bonds and get a return. Right. <laughs> a regular stream of income yeah. uh, on, on your bond investments. But they've raised rates so fast, so much, yep. so quickly. We've gone from, what was it, 0.25%, and now we're, we're already 2%. Yeah. Um, and they've already indicated that they want to raise rates to well over three and a half percent, maybe even four percent, depending upon what inflation does in response to the raising of the rates. Right. But you have to remember the way the bonds work. And, and the they're doing it in big chunks, too. They're doing 75 basis points at a time, things like that. Well, they originally were talking about doing 50 basis points right. at a time. And they've already indicated they've already made one change where they made a 75 basis yep. points increase instead of 50. And they've already indicated in July they're probably going to do another 75 right. basis points. 75 basis points is 0.75 percent, right? So, um, but you have to remember the way the bonds work. Bonds have an inverse relationship between value and, and income or right. yield. So, the, if the price of a bond is X, you know, ideally you're you know going to have a spread or the yield that a bond returns is going to mm -hmm. be kind of in line. Well, if the price of a bond increases, the amount of income or yield that you receive on a bond decreases. Right. In return, when rates go down you know, the yield goes up. Right. Well, interest rates have gone down so, or have gone up so fast that prices or values on right. bonds have decreased so significantly so fast. Yep. That's what's happened in the bond market this year when we've had just an absolute record year, not in a good way, um, with, with bonds where they're, yep. they're down in double digits pretty much across the board. Um, so, you're looking at balanced portfolios, moderate portfolios. I'm reading a lot of stuff. If you're an industry nerd like we are, <laughs> um, you're reading a lot of articles right now about, oh, the 60-40 portfolio is dead. And, and yeah, well, that's probably taking it to an extreme. It's, having, yeah. it's certainly having a bad year. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, that, that, that is why this market has sucked this yeah. year. The equity markets are always going to do. And you always know that you're taking risk in the equity markets. Sure. Your safe haven has not been safe this year, yeah. and that's what's made our life difficult. That's what's made it difficult for new retirees or recent retirees that have balanced portfolios. We're talking about conservative mm -hmm. portfolios here that are not performing the way that they're supposed to perform. Right. Um, and it's industry wise, you know, it's 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 everyone you talk to in our business is having these same issues. So, yep, agreed. So, go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Uh, you know. People are worried. They're panicked. The first thing that I would say, and we've talked about this on the show before, um, if your if your work if if you're doing your investments with the intention of getting a return, if that's the goal, is I want to get six percent or I want to get you know whatever number you come up with, when the markets go down, it tends to make you panic a little bit. 
right? Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of financial advisors out there, that's the way they do their business. I'm going to get you a good return, right? Yeah. Um, that's the reason we're big advocates of financial planning. Oh, for sure. Because the clients that have financial plans are the ones that are saying to us, I know it's bad <laughs> this year. I don't want to look, right? I know it'll come back. I just need to be patient, right? Because they know that the plan is, is designed to handle this kind of thing. So go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. You know, those, those uh, other major cycles where we had huge downturns in the first six months of the year. What causes that big upswing in those years past to almost catch back up? And, and how can we expect that this year if we can? Well, to understand how we might recover from this, we need to understand better probably what caused us yeah, cause this to occur. Um, and this is where, you know, uh, depending upon political affiliation, this is where we might wade into some right. territories that might upset a few people. But I don't think it's possible to have this discussion <laughs> and be honest and not talk politics. It, 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 we have and, to. And, 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 and unfortunately, the world that we live in, and this is honestly as a result of 08, the world that we live in, the markets and political policy have become so intertwined yeah. over the last several years. It's really, really difficult. I mean, we're, we're sitting here talking about what the markets are doing in response to what the Federal Reserve is doing. Correct. The Federal Reserve is a branch of the government. Right. Okay? So it, it's really hard to differentiate between the two sometimes, and especially right now when things are just so intertwined. But what happened in 08, 09 to cause 08, 09? There was an economic catalyst to right. it. So we had banks and lenders, mortgage lenders, that were giving out way too much money. We were, you know, we were in a really good time economically. We were recovering from the dot-com bubble in right. you know, the early 2000s. Um, so we had lenders giving out too much money to people that really couldn't prove their income, right. couldn't prove their assets. I mean, anybody, anybody that was in the mortgage business, you know, no, no, doc, no, you know, no doc loans yeah, <laughs> or remember low, those. low doc loans, things yeah. like that. Um, you know, basically you didn't need, you know, to, you didn't need bank statements or any, as long as you had a decent credit score, you can pretty much get anything right. you want. People that were mm. borrowing 125% of their home's value, right. uh, just ridiculous loans. Um, so obviously you started having a record number of mortgages begin to default. To default, right. So you had lenders that were losing money, banks that were losing money. Um, you know, it was a domino effect. So it started with the banks and, you know, it started with home values. Once home values started coming down, mm -hmm. realtors, you know, construction, any, anything in the construction age. I saw a stat recently where about 25% of our economy is depending on real estate or, yeah. or you know, the homes, right. basically. Um, residential real estate, just when you talk about contractors and construction and, you know, painters right. and you know, appliances and everything, right? There's, there's 20, 25% of our economy comes back to residential real estate. And so, you know, you had basically an extreme drop in 25% of the market, basically in 08, right. 09. Well, the response in 08, 09 was government intervention. Right. If anyone's familiar with what, you know, uh, Bush did back then of the TARP bailout, it was yep. like the most unpopular bailout ever in the history of yep. <laughs> I, I, I think I heard something it was like it was like the worst pulled political piece of political um, you know the, the worst political bill that was ever been pulled right. in the history of polling at that point <laughs> um, but you know you bailed out all these banks that were losing money hand over fist right. um, but what that did was it set up the expectation that when the markets drop the government is going to intervene they'll step in right what happened in 2020 when we well the government instituted lockdowns, so mm -hmm. we had a government-induced lockdown. So the governments induced these lockdowns, shut, basically tried to shut down the economy, which you, you never want to shut down an economy. It's right. a, you know, for many, many reasons, and as we're living through them right now. But they shut down the economy, government-induced, and then as a response to that, the government printed literally trillions, trillions. of dollars right. and gave money out as handouts in the form of child tax credits right. and, and, you know, also just stimulus money. Um, well, what happened was people were sitting at home. They right. weren't going out. Yeah, maybe they were spending more money on Amazon, but they weren't spending money on gas or travel or experiences right. or all kinds of other things. So we had record savings rates. People were starting to hoard that money. Mm -hmm. That caused... And when things started to open back up a little bit, you know, we had an economic boom for the end of 2020 and right. through 2021. Well, chickens come home to roost at some point. Um, the result of all of that government intervention, all of that money printing, 
inevitably was go- always going to be inflation. Yep. We, we had record low inflation for about eight years prior to this year. So kind of going back to record numbers, you know, the record numbers in the stock market and, you know, good versus bad year. Right. We were due for some inflation. Problem was we printed so much money so quickly that we had we all, all the, in- the inflation we had all the inflation yep. at once, right? And, and and there wasn't really anything you I mean, you could, couldn't avoid it, right? I, I mean, you had record low interest rates. Well, what happens with record low interest rates? Like we had, you know, was hey, did anybody? How many? How many of you all refinanced your home in the last couple of years? Right. I did. I got a two point seven five percent interest rate on my loan yep. on my mortgage. That's ridiculous. That is a stupid low amount of money mm-hmm. that I'm paying to own my home. Right. Um, money was cheap. When money was so cheap, that also increases the amount of money supply right. because people were borrowing more and more money. Most, most of the time, it is attached to an asset, but still, you have record numbers of people borrowing money at really, really low rates. Right. Um, so in order to combat inflation, this is, it's amazing how this is This is, is all where the Fed big, policy well, comes in. This is in, all yeah. a big circle, right? Yeah. It's amazing how it's all in, you know, correlated, but... Now the Fed policy is coming in. They're raising rates because they want to fight inflation. Right. Um, and they only have one tool in their toolbox. It's the interest rates. They go up, they go down. Um, so interest rates were ultra low. So they had to raise rates to try to reduce the amount of mm-hmm. money supply. People, you know, they had to make debt a little bit more expensive so people wouldn't take out as much debt. Right. That stunts growth. By, by definition, that stunts economic growth. Yeah. I mean, it and, and how do we get out of the inflation problem? Growth. That's how you solve the problem is with growth. Yeah. And so we're, we're literally in a position right now, and it sounds so counterintuitive to most people that don't really follow this on a day-to-day basis, but the Fed is in a position where they're almost trying to cause a recession in order to fix inflation. Right. It, it really, the, we, really, the only way to fix inflation, honestly, the only way to fix inflation, the money's already out there. The money's yeah. been printed. The money is in the supply. People are not going to give it back. People aren't going <laughs> to give it back, right? You know, um, So it's not like they're going to burn it. Right. You know, the, the money's out there. So because we've printed, the, the, the government created the problem. Really, the only way to solve the problem is government yeah. intervention. And I don't want to say government intervention. That's the wrong ter- government policy. Right. Um, Reducing the amount of money supply, <laughs> opening yep. things back up for growth, um, you know, it may be raising rates at a more reasonable level as opposed to what they're doing this year where they're just taking, um, you know, taking a fire hose and, yeah. you know, <laughs> instead of turning the faucet on, they're turning on the fire hose, yeah, right? Exactly. Trying to fix inflation all at once. Um, you know, we, we heard an analogy yesterday, you and I. Yeah, went we were to, at a symposium last yeah, night. Yeah, we were at a symposium last night. Shout out to First Trust. They're a great partner of ours. But... Um, you know, they were talking about how the Fed is trying to basically re- a, a typical business cycle lasts mm-hmm. about let's say seven years. Right. You got you know growth, uh, hyper growth, mm-hmm. right, and then you know it comes back down. You know, you think about right. a bell curve; it goes up and then it comes down, and then you know once it comes down, it starts back up again. Right. That's kind of a typical business cycle. Well, basically, what the Fed's trying to do is shorten the business cycle from mm-hmm. seven years to maybe three or four years. Right. They're basically trying to cram. All of this into a very small into window. A very small yeah. window, basically. So we're we're almost trying because we've had such you know record numbers of growth the last several years, really the last decade to be perfectly honest, but the last several years specifically. Um, well, now they're trying to basically hurry up, get through this recession, right. <laughs> get it here, get it over with, and move on to the next growth phase. Um, because ultimately, what they want to do is start lowering rates again. Because mm-hmm. then, you know, if you if you if you raise rates to cause the recession, to get right. into a recession, um, ultimately what that means is you can come in and play the hero, <laughs> start, yep. re- start lowering rates again, and you're going to see the market rebound. We had an, uh, uh, there was an happens. economist at that symposium last yeah. night. He had one of the best analogies I've ever heard. I, Eric and I were both laughing about yeah. it when he said it. He said that if you look back at history, when the Fed is raising rates rapidly, they would keep doing that until they break something which at that point in time is when we started laughing. And that's when they jump and they become the heroes by lowering those rates. And, yeah. and, and that's where that recession word comes in. Oh, look, government, government fixed the problem. Yeah, government the, created the problem, yeah. government fixed the problem. And you and I were talking about this before we started recording today. Um, the most terrifying words in the English language. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. 
right? I think that was Ronald Reagan was the one who originally quoted I, I, that. I would, I would argue it's somebody do something. Yeah. Um, I, I, actually, but, that was kind of the point that I was wanting to yeah. make is we have a tendency as a society to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Elected Official, do something about this. That's yeah. usually the worst possible thing they can do. You ride out cycles like this. You, you leave them alone. They will naturally work back into an efficient and system it, if you get out of the way. Sucks. And it sucks yes. when it happens. It really does. You know, to having to go through these business cycles of, you know, just negative growth, right? right. No, no one likes it. No of one likes not. to live through a recession. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, we we had you know everybody wanted the government to do something, right? You know, well, they COVID, did when COVID hit. Well, <laughs> they, they, they locked everything down. Okay, well, now they locked everything down and people were losing their jobs. Somebody do something. Okay, well, here's, stimulus here's some money. money. Yeah. Okay, well, there's your stimulus money. That's going to have unintended consequences on this side where, okay, now we have record inflation. How do we fight record inflation? Somebody do something about this record inflation. Right. Okay, we're going to. <laughs> it's, it's this vicious cycle it's that keeps happening. So, cycle. okay, now we have record inflation and we're going to raise interest rates really, really, really quickly. Yeah. Okay, great. We're going to, and, and we're, and we are, in fairness, starting to see signs of, I don't want to say disinflation, but there right. are definitely sectors of the economy where we're starting to see maybe a peak in inflation, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, you, you <laughs> Once again, you take your fire hose and you spray it on everything, you know, you're bound to hit something. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's also coming along with what's going to be interesting in the next couple of weeks is we're going to find out whether or not we're in a recession right now. Right. As so, the numbers start coming out. Yep. You know, we already, you know, that's two negative quarters of, or two, two consecutive quarters of negative growth. I, I tend to think we are probably there. If we're not, we're, we're right, headed there we're in right a hurry. There. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my guess is we probably are in a recession, and usually the stock market is a fantastic leading indicator yep. of a recession. Um, this is where you, it's always interesting. You know, everyone's saying, "Well, the stock market's going to react if we're in a recession." The stock market's already assuming we're in a right. recession. If numbers come out in a few weeks and we find out that we're not in a recession, mm -hmm. we're going to see a pretty good bounce. Um, unfortunately, what that's also going to lead the Fed to do is they're going to continue to raise rates right. because they're going to say the market or the economy is healthy enough to withstand some additional rate increases right. um, so we can continue to combat inflation. So it's, it's, it's always be careful what you wish for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In some ways, you almost want the recession to come. You want the news to be bad so we can continue to bottom out. Right. And once we bottom out, we can maybe take a little more healthy, proactive approach to, to fixing the problem. But... I, and and I would yeah. add this this to this as we start to wrap this conversation up. It, you know, we have a tendency, recession is such a dirty word, right? Yeah. We say it like, you know, through our teeth because we hate that word. We did a, a podcast on this several weeks ago. Recession is, it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. We've had, how many recessions have we had in the last hundred years? It's it's quite a few of them. People think of the big ones, the 08, and, and, and uh, they think of the 1970s. They think of the 1930s depression. Recessions happen a lot. Are you pulling up a I was, I was literally Googling yeah. that right now. Um, because the, the, when you actually look at the number of recessions, mm -hmm. it's, it's far higher oh, than yeah. most anyone would ever assume. Yeah. Um, I want to say it's in the 20s or 30s that we've had <laughs> in the last 100 years. It may be higher than that. 48 recessions dating back to the Articles of Confederation. So, right. so, so since the beginning years. of the country, right? Yeah, but, uh, you know, going back, and this is probably too much for me to absorb right away, <laughs> but I, I mean, the fact that I'm scrolling through this list of recessions to figure out what the total number is, right. I mean, we've had quite a few. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of my point. It was, it was like it's about 25 or 26 in the last 100 years. There we go. Yeah. That's kind of the point. Recession, like we said, we, we say it like it's a dirty word. It is part of the natural business cycle. Yep. We will come through this one, you know, whenever it does happen, it seems to be inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, we will come through it, we'll be fine, right? But I think my point, I know you agree with me on this, is the less government is involved, most likely we're gonna recover more rapidly, right? Yeah. And more healthily. Is that a word, healthily? It is now. I go with it. Sure, so, it is now. So uh, anything else we wanna talk about, just kind of wrap this up, because I. It, 
Well, this you is know, not the most fun conversation. It, yeah, so you go back to you know the the dot com bubble in early two thousands. You know, oh eight, oh nine. I'm just using the two most recent yeah. major events just because those you know. But recessions always seem less important in the rearview mirror. Right. Right. Bad news when it's in the rearview mirror. It's like, oh, you know, yeah, that yeah. that that sucks. But hey, we're here. We yeah, we made it. through it. But we're we're in the middle of one right, right. now. When you're looking at it through the windshield, it's, it's a little exactly. bit more painful. You know, yeah. when you know, I'll use, um, yeah, you know, this this might not be a good analogy, right? But my dad had cancer when I was in college, and mm-hmm. he, you know, had you know went through some radiation and chemo, obviously, and it sucked when we were going through it. Yeah. But we got through it, and so we look back at it, and this was. 20 years ago now, 20 plus years ago now, and it's, you know, it's in the rear view. And right. we kind of look back at it, oh, yeah, that, that did, yeah, that was not a fun time. Right. But he's healthy today. He's totally fine. We're all good. We got through it. When we look back in five, 10 years, we're going to look back at this moment in history in mm-hmm. 2022. We're going to look at it and say, yeah, there was a lot of bad. Yeah. It was not a fun year. But, yeah, we got through it. And the markets rebounded. It's really hard to, think about that happening right now when you're in the middle of the downturn mm-hmm. and you know we're at the bottom maybe we're not at the quote unquote bottom right now right. We're, we're definitely closer to the bottom than the top though um and you know i don't know if this is the ideal buying opportunity where people talk about buying the dip but you right. know what in six years if you bought now and the market goes down another five ten percent that it recovers are you right. going to know you know <laughs> Are you going to uh, remember I that didn't you bought hit it? that exact date? Yeah, yeah, and, and no one knows. No right. one knows. Anybody telling you that they're going to predict this? No, nobody. Knows. We do yeah. not know. It's funny. We we have these conversations on a daily basis where we're watching sure. the market, and you and you know we'll look at each other like, what in the heck is going right. on? Like, because it makes no sense what they're doing. Yeah. No, yeah. Yesterday is a yesterday is a perfect example. What did the market open yesterday? Down two oh, and a half percent yeah. or something like that, and then it finished. It was still negative, but I mean, yeah. it, it came really close to getting positive. Yeah, it was it, it was almost at break even at one point. In but, time. but yeah, but there was no economic news that came out no. really. There was no anything super negative that came out. It was just you no, know, you know, people were feeling kind of bearish. There's yeah. a lot of fear in the market right now, and that makes people do irrational things. Yep. Um, and so that's that's what we're dealing with right now. But I think when once again, when you look at historically speaking, and all we can ever do is look at history, right. Historically speaking, when we had horrible starts to the year, the second half of the year historically has always been positive. Yeah. It might not always fully recover by the end of the year, but the second half of the year has always been positive. You'll we'll feel be a little bit better yeah. by the end of the year than we do now. So if, the if you look at history. If the market's down 20%, maybe it doesn't rebound 20%, but if it rebounds 10%, All right. that's fantastic. Absolutely. What we don't want to do is overreact, do something irrational today that's going to cause us to miss out on that potential right. increase in the yep. you know rebound in the market for the second half of the year. Absolutely. All right. So thanks for uh, listening, watching. Um, Eric is much, much better at uh, liking and subscribing and all the rules there. So if you've got questions about the markets, how they impact you, uh, you're worried about uh, what's going on with your portfolio, your financial plan, whatever the case is, uh, give us a call. Reach out to us at uh, 502-200-5210. Or you can go to our website at fwppartners.com. I think Miss Producer's probably going to throw that up on the screen for us uh, if you're watching. Uh, but uh, Eric, I'll let you sign us off and we'll see you next week. Yep. Thanks for watching on YouTube or wherever you might be viewing our content. Thanks for listening uh, via whatever podcast whichever one it is right channel that you use to, to listen to podcasts so uh, definitely leave us a rating or review if you're able to share any of our content with any of your friends or family that you feel might benefit from anything that we have to say um, once again tune in uh, next time we look forward to spending some time with you again in the future thanks the information given herein is taken from sources that ifp advisors llc doing businesses independent financial partners ifp IFP Securities doing business as IFP and its advisors believe to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed by us as to accuracy or completeness. This is for informational purposes only and in no event should be construed as an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to buy any securities or products. Please consult your tax and or legal advisor before implementing any tax and or legal related strategies mentioned in this publication as IFP does not provide tax and or legal advice. 
Opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs of individual investors. This report may not be reproduced, distributed, or published by any person for any purpose without IFP's express prior written consent. Securities offered through IFP Securities, LLC, doing business as independent financial partners, IFP, member of FINRA and SIPC, investment advice offered through IFP Advisors, doing business as IFP, a registered investment advisor. IFP and Family Wealth Planning Partners are not affiliated. The information given herein is taken from sources that IFP Advisors, LLC, doing business as IFP, IFP Securities, LLC, doing business as IFP, and its advisors believe to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed by us as to accuracy or completeness. This is for informational purposes only, and in no event should be construed as an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to buy any securities or products. Please consult your tax and or legal advisor before implementing any tax and or legal related strategies mentioned in this publication as IFP does not provide tax and or legal advice. Opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs of individual investors.